I'm going to talk about using AddChild to take things out of the library during runtime and add them to the stage. So I have a few other lectures on AddChild, but I think some of them are getting a little bit old, uh, even though they still work. Uh, here's a new one that'll take a little bit different uh, perspective on the whole thing. In my library here, I have a ghost, that, a ghost movie clip, and you can see the picture of my ghost uh, up there in the library. And the reason why I want to use this as my example is because I want to demonstrate that Add Child is, is great for taking things out of the library at runtime and adding them to that stage. And the ex one of the best examples I can think of is a video game. So we aren't going to create a whole game, but we'll use some icons that um, might, might be in some classic games. And you, you have to add things at runtime for a game. You, you can't put everything on the stage at the beginning of the game because you're shooting characters or you're avoiding characters. You know, you're, you have uh, obstacles that you have to work with. And as you work with those obstacles, you're going to have to have them delete or go away and then bring new obstacles on the stage. Okay, so the, the idea of adding things to the stage during the game is a pretty fundamental thing. Now, to do this in Flash, you need to use the add child command. But first, you want to have something in the stage, uh, in, the, in your library, and you want to have it be a movie clip. So here I just have this, this ghost. I'm going to right click on it, and I go to properties. OK, my properties, uh, I give it a name, but that's nothing special there. That's just the name of the movie clip. Now, there's a basic mode and an advanced mode to this window. So I hit advanced, and it goes down. Basic, it goes up. So a lot of people uh, get confused when using that. Be sure it's on a movie clip. You hit Advanced, and then come on down and you choose Export for Action Script. And what that means is it's going to export that item so it can be used in the, uh, in the Action Script file at runtime. I select it. It defaults to exporting for frame one. That's an interesting thing to note. You can actually export uh, at different frames. Uh, this is, as a side note, if you have a lot of things in your flash file, you probably don't want to export everything for, for, for frame one. It would bog it down as your movie starts to load. But most of the time, if you don't have a lot loading, you'll be fine. Okay, you have a class name that defaults to the name of your, uh, of your movie clip. Then you have the base class. This just means that your movie is within flash, and it's a display object, and it's a type of movie clip. So we're using the same type of dot syntax that we have been introduced to earlier this quarter. I'm just saying that you're using uh, a Flash file, I mean, something from within the Flash library, and it's a display, and it's a movie clip. Okay, the only thing I did was bring up uh, the symbol properties and export for action script. That was it, and it did all the work for me. So I hit OK. Now you get this error message, or what looks like an error, and it's very confusing. It says a definition for this class could not be found in the class path. So one will be automatically generated in the SWF upon export. Well, that's fine. That's what we want. I don't know why they make it an error. It's very confusing. So that's great. I'm going to hit OK. And now I pull this off to the side. And I will add the code in the next, uh, in the next tutorial.